Welcome to Noonday Bible Class, Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. H.C. Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy and Sister Maria Trier is the one that packs these lessons for you so you can follow along. These are good lessons. This is uh, session six, Share Christ with Your Neighbor. The passage will be from John 1, 40 to 49. Uh, we want to pray for these on our sick and shut in. We want to pray for Tania Rucker, Nick Carter, Margie, uh, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn Cunningham, Sharon Berry, Pastor Tim Swanson, Deacon Barnum O'Duncan, Joseph Hampton, Ken and Virginia Sanders, Larry Henry Sr., Reverend Jerry Burgess. Sister Georgia Payton, Eloise Oliver, Bonnie Harris, Sharon Rockstead, Michael Peterson Jr., Beverly Combs, and Travolts uh, uh, Collins. We also want to pray for all those affected by disease and addictions. We want to pray for our teachers, students, facilities, and schools as, as they begin the new year. Brother Mario. Uh, Reno, uh, blessing and protection, Sister Diane Edwards for clarity and direction, Brother Har Harvey Johnson for healing of sickness, Brother John, uh, John Thompson for strength and comfort, and Pastor Rod Bowman, uh, Bowman for protection and healing and upcoming surgery, Brother uh, Lewis Jones for physical healing, we want to pray for CBC staff, Madrid. Maria Dreyer and myself, Ministries, Reverend uh, Francis and Reverend uh, Parker, Auxiliaries, Ministries, Teacher and Church Family, and our Pastor, Reverend Dr. H.C. Turner, for wisdom, protection, and strength. And we also want to pray for all those out there that's going to watch or watching, Lord, for their prayer request. So uh, we'll start off with scripture and then have prayer. I'll be reading some from Psalms 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and uh, even forevermore. So blessed be to the hearing and reading of Psalms 121. It's powerful in the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, thanking you for another day, Lord. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will minister and, uh, and teach us in this class, Lord, and as we study your word, Lord, let the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts, Lord. We pray for all those prayer requests that were mentioned, Lord. We pray that your will be done in the children uh, of your case there, each of them, Lord. We pray that you will answer them according to your will, Lord. And we thank you for this time we're going to spend in your word, and we give you praise, honor, and glory always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let me get my phone straightened out so I can no calls come in. Um, I can. Okay, and I want to. Okay, I'm all set now. Sorry about that. I should have that done before. Because um, I use my phone for some Bible scriptures, so that's the reason. Okay, the point uh, will be right. Like I say, the passage is John 1 40 through 49. The point 
is we love our neighbors when we tell them about Jesus. Amen. The Bible meets life. For many of us, the initial news of a virus in China was just that news. And we moved on to the next news item. It didn't take long for that little news blip to become something far greater. Within a few days, the flurries of news stories began to have a, a avalanche that affect every sphere of our lives. Overnight, everything changed throughout the world. We had to adjust to a whole new way of living. One bright spot in that season of uncertainty and grief was how people cared for one another. Neighbors checked in on each other, food banks saw record-breaking donations. Social media friends helped, even helped each other find toilet paper. People felt a sense of responsibility for one another. The devastating effect of COVID-19 pale in comparison in the separation of being separated from the right relationship with God and the urgency of our mission to reach those lost people with his message of reconciliation. Let's consider how we can love our neighbors by helping them find their greatest joy and deepest need the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. John 1, 40 to 42. One of two, one of the two which heard John speak or followed him was Andrew, Simon's Peter brother, Peter's brother. His first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, which uh, thou should be called Cephas, which is uh, by interpretation a stone. I'll never forget a story I once heard about a man who tried to share the gospel with a longtime friend. The man didn't know where to begin or what to say, so he just handed his friend a small booklet that explained the message of salvation. His friend read it and gave a most startling reply. If this is really true, I can't believe we've been friends all these years and you never told me. We made, uh, we made sharing the message of Jesus far too complicated. As helpful as evangelist methods and training program might be, the most effective witness can be uh, given to given is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to use the gifts and the personality God gave you. You see the different approach and responses for Jesus' discipline and how they told others about him. When Andrew responds to Jesus' invitation to follow him, he has been one of John the Baptist's disciples in John 135. It seems apparent that Andrew had publicly turned away from his sins and was waiting for the promised Messiah, God anointed one. After John uh, professed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, Andrew didn't waste any time. Intentionally, verse 41 notes that Andrew first finding his own brother Simon and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, indicating that that telling his brother was a top priority to him. While some may have been the first person he told, Andrew likely told a lot of people this good news as well. Question, what makes our testimony such an effective tool when sharing the gospel? Because uh, telling people that what God did for you and sharing, uh, because uh, also in the, in the you know, um, sharing it to your friends, to your uh, family, and out of that, they know you, and uh, it's effect too, uh, because they know what you used to be like, and now you're different, you know, they can see that difference. Um, so, and it's also, uh, it's a command by God to share it with, uh, what God has already uh, given to you, you know, uh, when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, 
you excited? You want to share, you know, and and, uh, and the story will tell you how. And, and and sometimes you can't be being yourself and just sharing the what you know about the Lord. So uh, we'll go on with the lesson, and then uh, you will understand what we we'll said. Evangelists are proclaiming the good news about Jesus. Someone that says evangelism is just one beggar telling another where to find bread. Think about the last time you gave or received some good news. It might have been about a job or a test result. Maybe you were so exalted a uh, sigh of relief when you heard the news, or maybe you were so elated you couldn't contain your excitement as you spoke. When many of us think of evangelism, we think of the activity that we do. But what we find in the New Testament is something more akin to a lifestyle than we live. The early disciples were so completely devoted to Jesus that they had uh, changed everything they were living for. They didn't uh, compartmentalize their spiritual lives. All of their lives became spiritual. We tend to approach life differently, especially since we live in a culture influenced by what are called a sacred, secular divide. We put our Christian self in one box and our work self in another. In fact, we probably have multiple boxes, family, recreation, entertainment, and so forth, that represents different aspects of our life. But in John Mark, Coma describes the mindset is in conjunction with how Jesus approached the spiritual life. It's easy to forget that Jesus was a builder or a carpenter, and if working an ordinary, unglamorous, separate job wasn't beneath the embodiment of the Creator Himself, why would it be uh, below us? So do you do your work, whatever it is, as a follower of Jesus, because there are no compartments. The way Jesus should permeate and influence and shape every facet of your life. Amen. What does this have to do with your witness for Christ? Everything. God has already placed you in a mission field and called you to reach the people nearest you with his good news. You don't need to go on an international mission trip or do a door-to-door -to -door, to -door, to -door in the community, as important as those ministry opportunities are. You can just start with the people closest to you, like Andrew did. No matter where you are, people need to hear about Jesus. Amen. And John 1, 43 to 46. The day followed, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, uh, the city of Andrew and Peter. Peter find uh, Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses is the law, and the prophet that did write, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any can there any good there, uh, any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Did you catch Philip's approach to evangelists in 46 when Nathaniel was skeptical? Philip simply said, Come and see. Those three words can tell us much about our evangelism is not as they tell us what evangelism is. As followers of Christ, we are simply messengers, heralds who invites people to encounter the Lord Jesus for himself. We are not sharing our message, we're sharing his message. Amen, that's important. The simple truth is incredibly free when we feel inadequate to be his witness. We only need to share the message. It's not our job to convict. We don't, uh, we don't uh, even have to persuade. This isn't an excuse not to study or to be informed of barriers of someone's faith. But a common-see approach frees us from trying to change anyone. 
Only God's power can change someone's heart. Amen. Regardless of the person's sin or background, his spiritual need is first to know the Lord. That's very good. When uh, we invite others to come and see Jesus, we share the message of Christ the way Jesus himself did. During uh, Jesus' ministry, many people saw him face to face, heard him teach, and saw his miracles, but none, but not all of them believed right away. Even after his resurrection and appearance to 100 people in 1 Corinthians 15, 68. Let's look at that. First um, Corinthians fifteen six to eight uh, six to eight. I'll be reading the uh, living. After that, he was seen by more than five thousand of his followers. At one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by the apostles. Um, and the eight, and last of all, as though I have been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. So, some still doubt in Matthew 28, 17. Let's look at it, Matthew. Matthew 7, 28. 28. And when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at his teaching. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, that Matthew 28. That was Matthew 28, 7, 28, 17. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. So not everybody's going to come when you tell them about Jesus, but the thing you are just point them to Jesus. And you don't know when somebody else might witness to him and, you know, They'll finally realize that they need Jesus in their life. But uh, that's not. Um, okay, then they had all the evidence they needed, but believed it did not come easy to them. Look at how Jesus interacted with them. He still included them. He did write them off. He still patiently allowed them to come and uh, see for themselves. It is easy to give up on people in frustration, impatience, or even despair. Friends may have been uh, coming to church, talking with you about the gospel, and even gotten connected with other Christians, but they still didn't believe. The heartbreaking truth is that some never will trust in Christ, but for others, they just need someone to accept them where they are, keep patiently sharing Jesus with them and loving them enough not to give up. Okay? In his book, The Invested Life, Joe Rosenberg observed all the way Jesus interacted with his followers. Keep in mind, these weren't just the Andrew and the Peters of Jesus' earthly ministry. These included the Judas and Jesus' ministry. Jesus lived with his followers. He ate with them, cooked with them, sang with them, and showed them how to care for others. Challenge your faith, challenge your faith, uh, and forgave them. He did. He did this all uh, the while, knowing not all of them would believe, and even those who did believe needed time to understand who he was. When we look at how Jesus shares his message of salvation, we see his love for others on display. We see him show mercy to those. Who with physical and spiritual needs. We watch him teach his followers to value loving ones, value loving one another more than perfectly following religious rules. We see him respond to other failures with kindness and forgiveness. We see him increasingly concerned 
that their hearts are right with God. Essentially, within Jesus' simple call to come and see who he is, we discover everything we've been learned about loving others, wrapped up in him. He is the good Samaritan who solved uh, helped the state when we were still his enemy and stopped the rescuer. He is the gracious king who delights in forgiving the debt that we can never prepay. He is an incarnated in our patient kindness and self-sacrifice. When we see Jesus, we see love. Amen. Who first invited you to come to see Jesus? When the uh, witness to me when I became a Christian was uh, or it's um, um, Robert Ayers. But there was a lot of people before that told me about him and it just wasn't the time. And Robert Ayers witnessed to me I was ready to receive Christ. And uh, so um, that's the last one in there. It was, uh, um, then John 1. 47 49. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said uh, of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guilt. Nathanael said unto him, When uh, knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, and when thou was understanding the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael I answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. This exchange between Jesus and Nathaniel is fascinating to me. I'm curious about the significance of the fig tree where Jesus saw Nathaniel. What happened there leading Nathaniel to believe Jesus was the promised Messiah? Was it just because the Lord knew he was there? The Apostle John doesn't give us those details, but perhaps the fig tree was Nathaniel's place of prayer and self-examination before the Lord. It's possible that, uh, as C.H. Spurgeon noted, the moment of our Lord's mention of that hollow spot and remembrance where, uh, where to Nathaniel, no secret and no sacred, and so sacred that he felt that the omnipotent one was before him. Amen. It is not necessary that we know Nathaniel's backstory because the point isn't really about Nathaniel. It's all about Nathaniel at all. It's about how deeply and perfectly Jesus knew him and the condition of our, his heart. Because of that, Jesus knew exactly how to communicate with Nathaniel to connect his soul. He knows each of us in the very same way, along with what we need to believe. One person may hear the gospel for the first time and trust Christ right then and there, while another must study the Bible for years before trusting in Jesus. Jesus knows the heart and background of every person. We see the heart of Jesus and how he greeted Nathaniel with a blessing. He said Nathaniel was an honest man. There was no deceit in him. His heart and mold were pure. How did Jesus know this? Because Jesus is God. He created Nathaniel. He knew Nathaniel better than Nathaniel knew himself. Jesus knows what is in the heart of all people. In John 2, 24, 25. Let's look at that. John 2, 24 to 25. Yeah, but Jesus didn't trust him because he knew human nature. No one needs to tell him what mankind is really like. That was in the living. I know our sinful state and I see our corruption. No one can accuse Jesus of being overly optimistic about the human condition. When Jesus saw Nathaniel, his first words to him were kind. Even identifying what was reliable in him, Jesus could have begun with words of condemnation and judgment, but instead he started with words of grace. 
the principle should guide us as we start, as we leave our family and friends to come to Jesus. Jesus, for example, we might affirm that someone that desired to be a good person and start a conversation with the truth that none of us can live up to even our own standards, much less God's standards. But we might begin to pointing out the way God has blessed them and how he gives all his blessings so that we can know the love, the know and love him. What have you, when have you seen friendship start? When have you seen friendship start someone on the path of Jesus? Well, that's, uh, That's a very great friend. If you, if you tell somebody about Jesus, makes up Jesus. That's a great friendship. That's a great person that was a friend to you uh, by sharing Jesus to you. Yeah. And all the testimony I ever heard of how a person came to faith in Christ, I never heard someone say he was ordered or shamed into conversion. An invitation to come to see can lead someone else to be open to exploring the claims of Christ. As he encountered Jesus, the Holy Spirit does his work of, of conviction. It is the kindness of God that works in a person's heart. The goodness of God leads the, to repentance, Romans 2.4. Let's look at that, Romans 2.4. Don't you see how wonderful, kind, tolerance, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Amen. At this point of Nathaniel's encounter with Jesus, Philip was in the background. Philip simply made an introduction. It was Jesus who met Nathaniel's need. With our friends, we show love when we invite them to come and see Jesus. We have the introduction, tell what we experienced when we came and saw and trust God to work in our heart. The uh, optimum of our friendship can be when we bring them to even a greater friendship with Christ. Amen. How can your group be helpful means to lead people to Christ? Amen. Says engage one of the following enemies. The best illustrates a way to begin the gospel conversation. Then write a prayer, ask an opportunity to share the gospel with the home. I mean, excuse me. Well, you can do that during the week and live it out. We love our neighbors when we tell them about Jesus. Choose one of the following applications. Trust. What holds you back from sharing Christ? Pray and ask God to make your faith. And him greater than your fear. Invite the same uh, with the same come and see mindset. See both Andrew and Philip invite friends to come with you to your Bible study group. Your group can provide a non-threatening way to come and see Jesus as your group discuss God's word. Share. Draw three three circles and make a list of people God has put in your life. And the first circle includes your closest relationship. In the second circle, write the list of your friends and co-workers. In the third circle, include acquaintances and neighbors you don't know well. Who is, who is in the circle does the Lord want you to reach with God? As you pray, look for opportunities to share Christ. Amen. So that's a great lesson. Always to share Christ. Tell people about that. Leave Jesus. Leave salt up to Jesus. He will change it. Not you. So next week, this will start a whole new quarter. Uh, it will be coming from out of the book of James. Uh, faith is on display in hard times. And uh, that's, that will be the first session. And it will be James 1, 1 to 12. So if you want to study during the week, uh, that right there, so you'll be ready for next week's lesson. So let's find a word of prayer.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, thanking you again for this lesson, Lord, and sharing Jesus, Lord. Telling people about your love and your, your just your, your um, salvation, Lord, that they might come to know you and have a relationship with you. Lord, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for being our God, Lord. Amen. We know that you love you. You do not want anyone to not know you, Lord, that, that at least that we share them, Lord, we did our job, Lord, and not the results up to you, Lord. But uh, let us share with our friends, Lord, to people we might not know or come to contact, Lord. Give us the words to say. Let the Holy Spirit witness to us, Lord, and let us uh, just be bold in our witness for you, Lord. And uh, just to tell them about the love that you share with us, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your joy and peace, Lord. And we thank you for even your trials and tribulations as we grow in our faith with you, Lord. But Lord, we trust in you today, Lord. Guide us and direct us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts throughout this day, Lord. And let us tell someone about Jesus throughout this day or week, Lord, and let them know that Christ is the Son of the living God. Watch the have a relationship with him, Lord. So we'll give you praise, honor, and glory always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll see you next week. Have a great week. Let's tell somebody about Jesus.